in Second Corinthians chapter ten. In Second Corinthians chapter ten, verses three, four, and five. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but casting down imaginations and everything that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the, to the obedience of Christ. I want to talk to you briefly on mighty weapons in the sluggard's hand. All those who have served the Lord in the past generations had the weapons that God gave them to use. I would dare say that none of those people had any spiritual weapons which are not available to us today. So if they conquered and we don't, it is not because we have less to work with but because we're lazy in making use of what we have the apostle said in verse 4 the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but these weapons are mighty through god to the pulling down of strong holes so then we know that god has provided the weapons for us. And those weapons are already in our hands. The question is whether we're using them or not. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. <laughs> Verses 10 and 11 show us that if we plug into the power of God, we can be strong in the Lord. If we're strong in the Lord, we can be overcomers. And if we're able to put on the whole armor of God, we would be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Then he tells us in verse 12 that we wrestle, but then we do not wrestle against men or women, flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Again, he emphasizes the fact that to defeat principalities and powers, rulers and wicked spirits in high places, all we need will be the whole armor of God. And again, he emphasizes that if we have the whole armor of God, we will be able to stand and withstand in the evil day. Having defeated all principalities and powers, rulers and wicked spirits in high places will be standing waiting for any other attack. That is, will be more than conquerors, will be more than able. And then he tells us what the spiritual armor, the whole armor, what it consists of. There are people that leave these uh, simple weapons that the Lord has provided and they seek after other things which are not revealed in the Bible. They feel that what the Bible has revealed as a whole armor is not sufficient but you can understand that it uses the words whole armor in verse 11 and also in verse 13 and all the pieces in the whole armor are outlined in these verses before us. If we have them, then we'll be able to conquer any force. We'll be able to conquer 
from whichever direction those forces will be coming from. Verse 14, stand therefore with your loins girt about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness. So we have truth, then we have righteousness. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We have the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Again, we have the shield of faith. Then in verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Then the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, the pieces in the whole armor, here we are. One, the truth. Two, righteousness. Three, the gospel. Four, faith. Five, salvation. Six, the word of God. Seven, prayer. Now it talks about the loins being girt about with truth. It talks of the breastplate to protect the sensitive, delicate part of your being, your heart. The breastplate of righteousness. It talks of the shoe of the gospel of peace. Then the shield of faith. Then the helmet of salvation. The word of God, the sword of the spirit. Then prayers and supplication in the spirit. Basically, these form the whole armor of God. If, we, if you put on this, you will be able to withstand in the evil day. You will be able to conquer all the enemies that will ever face between now and the time you see Jesus Christ. You will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, as you examine the people in past generations who have been defeated by the devil, you can examine the event of their defeat and ask yourself whether they add on the whole armor. What you will discover is this. None ever put on the whole armor who was ever defeated by the devil. He's cunning, he's clever, he's mischievous, very bad, and looks powerful, but none ever put on the whole armor of God that was ever defeated. Now, this is not a preaching session. This is a teaching session where you really analyze what you have in the word of God and then you're able to take on, as the Bible says, the whole armor. No doubt, perhaps all of us have listened to messages on this passage before. And uh, we have told ourselves and people have told us, you put on the whole armor and then the devil will not be able to see you anymore. He sees only the armor. And he doesn't even know who is uh, having the armor, whether it's a man or a woman or Jesus Christ himself. Good preaching. But we need more than that. Other people have suggested if you put on the whole armor of God, the devil will not even come near to wage war against you. Good preaching, but how much truth is there? By the way, what is the whole armor? Have the people actually put on the whole armor? Other people have spoken as if all people who are born again already are putting on the whole armor. All you need is to recognize it and confess it. You have the armor on you already. Apparently, that seems to be good preaching, but it doesn't always work like that. 
And you can see from all these uh, places that we have read. Now, it starts with truth. Your loins get about with truth. And yet, he tells you in verse 17 that you have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The casual reader does not see any difference. Truth is truth. The Word of God is truth. And truth is part of the word of God. And yet, in outlining the armor, the whole armor, he says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And then he says, later, you take on the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, truth, as it is presented here, is what girds up the loins of your heart. Now, in the olden days, they had flowing garments. And as they were going about going to battle, they had to gather uh, the hem of their garments and then buckle everything with a belt so that there will be no disturbance. And there are some aspects of the word, the truth, by with which you gird up yourself so that you are not here and there but the loins are gathered up by this truth you brace up yourself with this truth yet the word of god is still there you give yourself to the word of god so that at any time the devil uh, may strike or may come the sword is there in your hand the sword is the word of God, yet the belt is the truth. You are so very careful that no dishonesty or anything on anything untrue uh, comes near your life. Because the only way you can brace up yourself together is to be braced up, girded up with the truth. You buckle up, you tighten your belt with the truth. And that girds your conscience there is no guilt in you you are living by that truth practical doctrine the golden rule the teachings on, on the Christian life the teachings that preserve your conscience the teachings that relate to you the sword relates to fighting against the devil but this truth relates to yourself getting up yourself Tightening up the belt, bracing up yourself, gathering yourself together, not living a careless life. The truth that puts you under control. If you have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and you wield it against the devil, and you think that is all the truth you need, but the truth does not bear upon you. Guard you up, brace you up, control you, put you under subjection. You know you are not putting on the whole armor. <coughs> And you have found people, no doubt, that have wielded the sword of the Spirit. And they will quote, it is written. And it never works. Because they are not guarded up with the truth. Before Jesus said, it is written, he was, he guarded his loins with truth. His conscience was under the control of the truth. His life was braced up with the truth. And you start with that. Then it says, the breastplate of righteousness. You are righteous within and without. God knows that you are righteous. And if you are righteous, you are not pleading the blood every time. Oh yes, the blood is important. But you know, those who are pleading the blood every time, they know something is lacking and they want to make up. And, the, you know, always telling the Lord, Oh Lord, I depend on the blood. We do also. But you are so conscious of that, you repeat it all the time because you know that uh, otherwise, since you've not been girt about with truth, and you feel so unrighteous, and you have so much disappointed the Lord, you have to be reminding the Lord all the time. That, Lord, I'm depending on the blood. I'm depending on the blood. 
But the Lord is also expecting that the blood is not only the is not the only armor. He wants you to have the breastplate of righteousness. And this is not uh, what uh, people refer to as uh, imputed righteousness. Their yeah, God is blind. When they lie, God also sees. He sees only the righteousness of Christ on them. You know there are people like that. If they backslide and they are dancing around the idol, oh no, God doesn't see that. All he sees is the blood upon the lintels of our houses. Only the blood that he sees. If they act like Achan and they are taking the forbidden thing, God doesn't see that. Only the blood that he sees. And the righteousness of Christ. And if they behave like Ananias and Sapphira, God doesn't see that. All that God sees is the righteousness upon us. And we are putting on that righteousness. And there are preachers that major on that. But you don't have a way of knowing how defeated their disciples are. You don't know. You just listen to cassettes. Or you listen to these people that are giving such messages that they have the righteousness of God upon them and yet they do not have this personal righteousness and they do not put on the breastplate of righteousness upon them they are all defeated because uh, the devil is overcoming them in every way possible and they have the stories of defeat to tell so then, if you are putting on the whole armor, these are the mighty uh, weapons. One, truth. And that truth bears upon your conscience. You have a sensitive conscience, it controls you. Then you put on the breastplate of righteousness. Then the gospel of peace. And you have gospel of peace if you are a peace lover and a peacemaker. But if you are not for peace, you are not short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Then above all, taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith. Now, we have heard about faith so much that um, we have much theory, much thesis about faith. But we don't have the reality of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith. And there are times you have felt so great while the preacher is preaching. And uh, there's a lot of jumping and shouting and demonstration in the preaching. And the preacher says, the devil is in trouble. And everybody says yes and amen. And at that time you think you have faith. And the devil is just waiting outside the door. And uh, you know people say trample on the devil and let me see you. And you trample on the devil. And the devil is not there where you are trampling. And you can tell it's not there. All that is demonstration. We're, we're, we're talking about real victory. And you get out of that place where you shouted and cried and jumped. And the first thing you know is that somebody asked you a question, you told a lie, you are afraid. Aren't you defeated by the devil? If we say the devil is in trouble and he's making you to tell a lie immediately after that meeting, and you say the devil is in trouble, you are in trouble. The shield of faith. You know, something is definite. If you have it, listen, you'll quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That's the text. People say, do I have faith? Well, if you have the shield of faith, you will quench all A-L-L. -L, all the fiery darts of the wicked. If you are not able to, you don't have the faith that is talked about here. You know, sometimes we use uh, all these um, illustrations of putting on the uniform. I would say, you see that uh, policeman or that soldier, 
that is standing on the road. He has a uniform on. He puts up his hand like this, and the devil knows the vehicle will stop. And two, if you put on uniform, and you're right there on the road, you put up your hand like this, that devil will stop. You know, if cool plotters are really looking for you, and you put on the uniform of a recruit, just this ordinary uniform, and you stand on the road, and those school plotters are really searching for you, and they saw you like this, and you put up your hand like this, they will shoot you behind, uh, beneath your armpit. But there is a type of uniform that is bulletproof. Ministers need it. Let us leave the ordinary uniform to the recruit. You know, these new born again, uh, born again people that have just come. The ordinary uniform. That's the first uniform they give you when you get into the army. But the uniform you had when you were an ordinary member is still the same uniform you are carrying about now that you are a state representative. Don't you know that the enemy is a stronger enemy for you? He's looking for you now because he's wanting to come to against you. And you're talking about this ordinary uniform. You don't go into the army of God and say what you want is a greater type of uniform that is bulletproof. That anywhere you go, he shoots his arrows and darts and you're secured. You know when you join the army, sometimes they won't even give you a vehicle. They won't give you anything to start with. Eventually they give you, uh, you know, some a vehicle. Oh, it's true, it is painted. But then, as to become very, very important, indispensable to the country, they tell you to bring that other card they gave you that has ordinary, just the color of it. It's just the color. It's only color, but it's color. And then they give you another vehicle. That vehicle, as long as you're inside and you wind up, is bulletproof. It's still very cool. The other one they have got from you to bring this one now is also still it's also very cool but one is different from the other and if you are a minister of the gospel you better have the real uh, vehicle that is appropriate for you you know there are different types of faith uh, there is a type of faith that is all right for a member of the church to have if he's sick that faith will heal him if he has a problem, that faith will carry him through. And to the limit of his function and role in the church for that member, that faith is enough for him. But as you get higher, you need the shield of faith that is wide enough and strong enough that will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked that are aimed at you. Now, these are the uh, pieces of the armor that the Bible talks of. Then the helmet of salvation. The word salvation is very, very broad. But then it culminates in the fact that Jesus purchased the whole salvation on the cross. And if you have got all you purchased on the cross, you have that helmet of salvation. Then the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God. It doesn't say Psalms. Because the only thing some people know just Psalm 23. The devil comes from any direction, Psalm 23. He comes from behind, Psalm 23. He comes from front, Psalm 23. He doesn't know any other thing. The sword is the word of God. Not just one verse. Not just the Psalms. Not just a particular favorite verse that you knew or heard from such the scripture. The whole word. And then it talks of praying with all prayer. All prayer. I told you yesterday when we were going for seminar that uh, I've seen people praying, praying, praying. They don't understand prayer. With all prayer. That means that there must be more than one time. There is a prayer of petition. There is a prayer of authority. 
there is a prayer of praise there is a prayer of keeping the devil away permanently there is prayer for the sick but there is prayer also for casting out devils have you seen some people praying and casting out devils I've seen some of them that devil demon possessed person is there and they are here they kneel down they want to pray and cast out devil they bow their head they close their eyes oh jesus drive away the devil you better open your eyes that man will knock you on the head <laughs> If you don't know how to do it, run out and call another person who knows how to do it. Don't waste your time. All prayer, different kinds of prayer. And you know, when you really know how to pray, you will know that it is not just a, a one-line thing. Start the same way, build up the same way, end the same way, in Jesus' name, amen. It doesn't always work like that. All prayer and supplication. And it says, with all perseverance. Now, these are the pieces in the armor. And as we see these pieces in the armor, the question is, have you got them? The mighty weapons are there. But now, the fact is that there are even people that have these uh, mighty weapons, but then their hands are weakened. They themselves are lazy. They will not do what ought to be done. Now, when you are lazy, the weapons may be there, but you will never use the weapons. I dare tell you that the Bible that a professor of a university uses is the same Bible that a secondary school student uses. The same Bible, different hands, therefore different results. You can have the same weapon as I have. Yet I may develop myself in the use of that weapon. And uh, you see that in the army as well. Different people may have the same type of um, ammunition and arms given to them. But they may have different experiences. And these experiences may come through practice and uh, through much involvement. And because they have practiced much and they have been involved much, they are able to um, win victory more than other people that are having the same type of armor. Now, when you start making use of these pieces of armor, you will not do it um, completely correctly the first time. But as you improve, as you develop, if you are not lazy, you'll find that you'll be more competent in making use of the armor that the Lord himself has given you. But if you're a sluggard, a lazy person, you will not be able to use what God has given you. The average uh, person here today has um, some of this armor. At least you have some part of the truth, if not the whole truth. You might have heard much of the whole truth, but then some part has gone into your heart. And about righteousness, I don't think we can compare those of us who are here with the majority of Christians outside deeper Christian life ministry. And concerning faith, a lot of us here have a the measure of faith, mustard seed faith. Now Jesus said if you have the mustard seed faith, you can move a mountain. But scarcely do we find one or two that has moved any mountain, though the mustard seed faith is there. So it is not the problem of not having any part of the armor at all. It is the problem of being so lazy that we will not practice and learn and develop on the use of the armor that we have got. As we look at people in the Bible, 
And we see this Syrophoenician woman that came to the Lord Jesus Christ. She came with faith. But would you like to believe that after seven years of being in Christ, that gentle woman has more faith than you have? Maybe she doesn't have more faith, but she has more persistence. And it is the persistence that is joined to her faith that makes the faith great. Maybe you have the same type of faith, but it is the listening that is joined with your faith that makes you to have what is called weak faith. The centurion that told the Lord Jesus Christ, speak the word only. I don't think you like to believe that that centurion had more knowledge about the ability of Christ more than you have. I think it is putting that confidence to work that makes that uh, centurion different from you or different from any other person. And so you will see that you may have the same type of faith, you may have uh, the truth, you may have uh, the helmet of salvation, but then if you are lazy and you do not understand how to make use of the armor God has given you, you might be failing and your nose is being rubbed on the ground, on the wall by the devil, and yet here you are with the armor on. The sword is in your hand, the breastplate of righteousness is there, the truth is there with which you are guarded and everything is there and you and the armor the devil still puts your nose on the ground so add the armor on when Goliath came out what did he do he trembled then David came on and Saul said David there's nothing wrong with my armor you can use it if you know how to use it. It's only that I don't have the heart behind the armor. But the armor is there. And David tried the armor. He said, this is too much, this is little trouble. This one is too much for the little problem I have. It's too heavy, I've not used this before. Let me get armor that is even smaller. Those who get greater victory, it doesn't mean that they have more armor than you have. In fact, many of the times, they may even have a little armor, less than you have. The only thing, the only thing is that they are not lazy. They know how to use the little that they have. And this uh, young boy uh, went to the riverside, you know the story, and he collected the stones together. The stones with faith in God, that's a great armor. The pieces of armor with doubt and unbelief, that thing becomes so small that you can't use it. He defeated Goliath. Now, many of us have the armor on, but then we're so lazy we won't develop. In um, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23, In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. No matter how great the armor you have on, if you are a talkative, you cannot learn how to make use of the armor at the time you are talking. When I was at school, all that I had were the basic textbooks. My father did not have the extra money after paying the school fees we paid in those days to buy all these uh, colorful books, uh, pictorial books in uh, geography, in biology, and many of the other books that my classmates had. All I had were just the basic textbooks. But you know what? I knew some of those uh, students that had the best of the textbooks, they couldn't even get grade 3 in school search. They failed. The textbooks were there, but they played football, they talked, and they wasted a lot of their time. 
and uh, there are believers also like that they have uh, commentaries at home different types of bibles at home cassettes at home and uh, outlines at home many many things they have at home yet they don't have time they talk too much there are pastors here in our midst whose uh, church is just so small for two three years and yet they have attended IBTC they have books they have a lot of material and if you dare call them to give a seminar on how to prepare a message in a retreat you call some people together or you tell them to lead a search the scripture in another man's church not in their own church gather the people for them call them to the state capital and say brother you are handling the study scripture preparation today and uh, if you give him some hours to prepare he knows how to use the concordance how to use various various books and he comes and he preaches and you feel ah, ah. so this man has all this knowledge and his location is still 52 after three years the weapons are there but he's so lazy that he will not develop and be able to do the work he ought to do when i was at school some of uh, our people fellow students that were careless when the examination was coming two months three months to the examination they will stop going for dancing they will stop every other thing. When I was in secondary school in class 5, they even excused us from physical work, from every other thing that will disturb us. They wanted us to concentrate. If the people of the world are as wise as that, why can't you be wise? You have a fellowship in the evening. Maybe on Friday. Maybe on Thursday. Maybe on Tuesday. Maybe on Monday. And here you are. And you know that various categories of people are coming. And um, it's a matter of eternal life or eternal death. You want to snatch them away from the hands of the devil. Then you go, from morning, you go out to just go and enjoy yourself. Not that you go to commit sin. Maybe you go to the office. Maybe you get involved with physical work. Maybe you get involved with uh, planning and administration. Administration is good. Don't misunderstand me. But the devil will like you to be bogged down with administration and not prepare for that fellowship in the evening. And then you go all about like that. Maybe you don't even prepare the outline in time. Eventually, when the fellowship is to start, maybe at 5 o'clock in your location, at uh, 3.30 you come back home and uh, you tell your wife can I have some food there you have meeting at 5 since morning you have not found time to pray since morning you have not had time don't you know farmers before they go to market uh, before they go to farm they sharpen their cutlass you have not sharpened the cutlass it's true the cutlass is there and then 3 o'clock or 3.30 you come back home again uh, you tell your wife give me food and you eat like you are not going for battle and you become so heavy that you just feel like wanting to sleep and you sleep five o'clock has reached and your wife uh, comes to wake you up bro bro it's five o'clock have you told the person who lead courses ah then you go you want to take your bath again and then you go to take your bath over there you get there a good samaritan started leading chorus you said who put you there you discipline him again <laughs> the devil will be watching you the devil will say you are getting ready for me and then you get in there 
and you say tonight the Lord is going to surprise everybody. The Lord. God will surprise you. <laughs> Nothing will happen. You are not prepared. You are not doing the work. The work of uh, soul winning, church building, is not a work for people that will talk, 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 and talk. And uh, when you find people who don't understand, how to make use of the armor that they have, then they will not be able to have success and victory on the work. But here it says, in all labor, there is profit. If you will really labor, the armor is there. The Bible is, uh, is there. The word of God, concordance, everything is there. If you now really address yourself to the business, of preaching the gospel, praying for the people, you will find that the Lord himself will walk in mighty ways. But the talk of the lips tendeth only to poverty. If you are a talk at him, you will not be able to defeat the devil of today. I don't know the devil of yesterday, but the one of today. The one that is hindering people from getting saved, from wanting to give attention to the word of God, if you are talkative and you are not getting prepared, you will not be able to. And so understand that you should give time, give time to preparing yourself. Now, I would have gone into details on what I do, but you know, even Jesus Christ told us, don't throw your peers before the swine. And you know, it's unfortunate if I can refer to workers and use that verse on you. But you know, if you just uh, bring out deep, deep things, the one on the surface we have brought out, we have not used them. The one we have listened to, that we have said, okay, this is how we do this, this is how we do this, this is how we do that. We have not made use of them. So for me now to be going into details and say that uh, uh, this is what I do, this is what I do, so as to be able to keep at the level of ministration that I ought to keep on. Now, what would be the need? After all, if I put this uh, weapon in your hand and you are lazy, while you are asleep like this, the enemy will even come and take that thing away completely you wake up like this you say where is my armor and the thing is gone but you know with all that you are hearing and all that you are not hearing about what is going on in lagos it is not uh, that god is uh, partial that is favoring lagos because lagos is headquarters if I was sleeping and you are walking, the revival will be on your side. And we would not be having anything. But when we understand that this is the armor, and we are to make use of the armor and really develop, and develop every day, it's not that I started schooling, real schooling, myself and it is when you know that this is it when i was at school if anything happened with daddy and his wives because he had many i never worried myself about it because i was preparing for school sir ordinary school sir i knew that if i worried about anything happening back at home with those many wives at that time school certificate will go I, know, I still know that today. That as I'm in a school right now, in a school of praying, learning, and training, if anything is happening outside there and I bother myself about it, I will not pass my exam. And you know, the exam of school sat only for a few days. The exam we have now is almost every day. On Thursday, they bring those people and they say, Minister, come for examination. 
On Wednesday, they bring them. And they say, here you are, counselor, come for examination. And if I don't prepare for that examination, and this is a tougher examination, because the examinations I took before, my teachers wanted me to pass, and they gave me all the help. The examination we are taking now, the devil doesn't want anybody to pass. And you know all that, and you put the armor by somewhere. One night, as we were praying, there was a boy there. There was no bone inside one of the legs, since 10 years ago. The mother had taken the child to uh, UCH Ibadan. And um, the doctor said, we're sorry, there's nothing we can do. Because if we make POP for this leg, the flesh will just rot away. It will be rotten because there's no bone inside to be able to carry it. And so the woman just dropped the child in the hospital premises and started weeping. A good Samaritan came and said, Mother, don't weep. God will help you. Since 10 years ago, we were going to have uh, this National Stadium a crusade and the child was brought there. My brother, before that crusade, for two weeks, I didn't preach on Monday or Thursday because I knew examination was coming. I didn't counsel. Ordinary counseling. Sometimes I don't even come out at all. I did more than that when I was reading for school search. That's not strange. Ordinary school search. Till 3 a.m. I'll be studying ordinary school search. If I did that for school search and I'm facing a greater examination, are, are we foolish? When I was at the university, without taking Nescape for anything. The eagerness of the exam is greater than Nescape. Without taking Nescape for anything, I can sit down for seven, eight hours. If I won't even know that time has gone. Sometimes food. I will feel that that food is a disturbance. Even friends. When we are leaving for degree examination, I will sit like this in, a, in my room. You can play any type of music, either Jim Reese or Christian music or anything. If I'm really preparing for exam, I won't hear at all. So if I've taken all those examinations before, and now I come to another exam period, and this one is more serious, the examination I took at university, who knew me? Even the lecturers in other departments did not know me. This examination at the stadium, all over the nation they were watching and you want to take an exam like that and you just say uh, you know psychedelic life and just say God will do it God will ah, ah. God God doesn't stay by people who are lazy so I I didn't even know which message I will preach that's, and that's what happened to me in exams before when we were at school, you will read this part, the some mind will tell you it will come out, then you go again, you read other parts, some mind will say it will come out, you go again and read other parts, didn't you take an exam before? Because this was the first crusade to this category that we will do. Now if you, you people who are here, if you, if you were watching before, I never preached uh, seriously at crusades before. Not seriously. The one we had at Costain, in 1979, those of you who are here, you will know that I was there, I was leader, but I knew I wasn't evangelist. I never deceived myself. I knew I was a teacher. And the evangelists that I knew who could uh, stir the people up, give them altar call, I put them there. If they make mistake, I correct them. I can mark their papers when, when they take their exam. <laughs> The one we had at Atal Balewa Square, if you watched very well, to start with, I wasn't even at home when they started. When eventually they started, I, I came there and uh, shouted, a lot, uh, shouted a lot, because you know, when the power is at a low level, shouting should make it up a little bit. <laughs> shouted a lot on the people, and uh, thank God for his patience. 
But you know, this time now, I couldn't shift it on anybody. Six days. And uh, for those two weeks, I was just saying, oh God, all this uh, publicity they made, and these people are coming. Huh. It is not that uh, the exam you take and then you hear results after one month, they say you fail. The very night you take the exam, this one, that very night they see the failure there. <laughs> you know, if you don't reason like I'm telling you now, you wouldn't do Christian work. You will just be playing, thinking that you are fighting the battle. And uh, by the grace of God, we started that uh, crusade. And this boy was brought, who had no bone in one of the legs. As we were praying, the child said, Mama, this leg is paining me. Mama said, just uh, close your eyes. By the time we finished the prayer, the boy jumped up. Bone has come into the leg. Bone inside that leg. But... It is not that there is a weapon in my hand which is greater than the one in your hand. It is that I will prepare like I'm preparing for exam. I will be diligent. I will not allow myself to just talk and talk and talk and talk. And I will really prepare. But you know, if uh, we don't understand all these things, and we just say, Lord, God is on the throne. He's been on the throne before you were saved. He's always there. But to walk with you, one of those days, that the message was still going on, a girl who had been lame, the hands were lame, the legs were lame, for about six and a half years, while the message was going on, the girl jumped up and started walking. And the people started shouting where they were, where they saw that. And they would pray a simple prayer like this, and the eyes of the people got open. But I will tell you that the first day that those miracles took place, for the second day, I said, God, only one day has passed out of six, remaining five. I became even more afraid. Because the people that saw what happened yesterday, they will be watching for what will happen today. And the second day we got there. And you know, I have to be asking God what message I will give. And I still do that today. In fact, I do that every time. On Thursdays here, we, we do that. Every time. Not just, uh, you know, you... Uh, you are lazy, you will not prepare, you will not do anything at all. The armor is there, but you will not develop. If they put gun in your hand and you don't train yourself on how to handle the horn, how to handle the gun, or you have the car, the key is there in your hand and you don't, want, you don't learn how to drive it, or somebody manages to teach you, and uh, eventually you get license. After getting license now, no more practice. You won't know how to drive very well. And uh, as we continued, that day we prayed, and, uh, and a, a Muslim man who had gone for operation in Britain, and the eyes were still blind, while we were praying, now understand, when we have faith clinic at retreat, and people get healed, we preach faith to them, and by their faith, which we have preached to them, they get healed. That's different. That's different from when you have a crusade and an allergy is there. Who, if he gets healed, is totally depending on your faith. Because he says, nothing in my hand I bring. Only on the faith you have, not the one you are preaching, only on the one you have, on that is he going to get anything. And we started praying. And his eyes just got open. On one of those days where the person who was lame, there were many of them. These are the ones I'm just remembering to tell you. When we finished, he was still lame. When he got into the bus, he was still lame. But we had prayed miracle prayer, the crusade field. 
and then when they called this bus stop and he wanted to take his sticks and get down the power of god just struck him right there at the bus stop he started walking that's the power of god you have the same weapon in your hand but when i'm praying you are eating when some of us are locking ourselves up and really reading and studying and praying knowing the mind of god you have too many friends your friends are your enemies too many friends this one will talk this one will talk and then you will talk you are a man of society you are not a single-minded man who knows that this work that is to be done it will be done and uh, you see if you are not willing to really labor like that the desires will be there the weapons will be there but laziness will not allow you to be able to do what you ought to do in proverbs chapter 15 verse 19 the way of this lawful man is as an edge of thorns but the way of the righteous is uh, made plain the slothful man the man that is lazy he has so many excuses he sees difficulties he does not see opportunities he'll be saying well those difficulties are there that is why we cannot do this we cannot do that and in proverbs chapter 22 verse 13 it says the slothful man says there is a lion without I shall be slain in the streets. Too much fear. There are lions outside. There are difficulties in my state. There are difficulties in my local government area. There are difficulties in my uh, local church. Too many complaints and uh, too many excuses. There is a lion without, I shall be slain in the streets. Because of that, that lazy man or lazy woman will not get the work done. In Proverbs chapter 24, from verse 30, I went by the field of the slothful, by the vineyard of the man void of understanding, and lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles, had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof were broken down. The edge around the field, the stone wall, have been broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and I received instruction. Yet a little sleep. You know, that's all that kills us. That's the difference between the victor and the victim. A little more gossip. A little more talk. A little more relaxation. A little more liberty. A little more indulgence little more food little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the hands to sleep just legitimate little sleep so shall thy poverty come as one that traveler and thy want as an armed man now the weapon is available if you will talk less and work more and pray more now the prayers that uh, many people pray they are aggressive when the trouble comes but you know it reminds me of uh, my days at school i knew some of those uh, students that they won't even write their notes from the first term or first semester. They won't work to any timetable. They won't no timetable at all. They won't check up in the library. Even the normal ones will receive at the lecture time, they don't have time for all those things. And they're at school. And eventually, a week to the exam, they want to burn the midnight oil. Many of them 
from the example they carry them out they had mental problems because for those seven days they take pills they take Neske they take everything you can think of just to be able to pass that exam but they are not able to those who don't have mental exertion and they are carried out immediately they get into the exam hall like this because they hurried up everything while they are reading the exam paper they just forget everything they just hurriedly learned in that one way but some students who are good not that they are genius not that they are too talented above other people but from the very first time they have a policy of hard work near the time of exam they will relax at least a little and they go into the exam hall fresh they do better you know spiritually there are people who don't pray ordinarily who don't read the bible ordinarily who don't get prepared for the battle ahead ordinarily ordinarily you don't do anything but maybe you give them seminar on demonology and you give them three days notice and now they begin to pray they won't allow those who are living together with them they won't allow them to sleep shout real prayer it's too late my brother why not tell the state representatives that God? that topic is difficult give me the one that i can just teach the people like like marriage give them theory and let them go and sort themselves out <laughs> don't give me this one that is everybody will know immediately that uh, this one is theory but the one i can just open bible open bible for them give me that one or restitution that i can just put on them and then let, let them go and uh, find their way and do what they want to do but this other one you are giving me now <laughs> they will know my littleness of faith and my weakness please state representative change it you better go and plead like that instead of just uh, using both faith and just three days saying oh you devil you will come out in the name of jesus you will come out <laughs> but you know the man who has been preparing for a long time oh you don't know spiritual things i was coming out of the fellowship center and i was a man that had mental problems for four days they have been laboring with that man four men holding him and he was almost ragged and i was entering into the vehicle and they dragged into me saying bro bro please help us with him and his eyes were wild and i said what the? then they told me the story and i sat down there i don't stand up for the devil i will stand up for jesus anywhere <laughs> for the devil i sat down there and I said in the name of Jesus, you devil, get out. Yeah. And I stopped. And I asked the man, what's your name? He told me his name. I said, you know these people? He, can't. he said, yes, I know this. I said, go with it. Don't make trouble. That was the end. Yeah. But it is long private prayer, short public prayer. <laughs> but the one you don't prepare internally. And then they call you now, you begin to make noise and disturb everybody in town that one is no prayer are you following what i'm saying yeah. so that is the thing the armor is there but develop develop see how to use this thing there was a boy that had a, a terrible problem the problem was so serious that the father said i will kill this child and before a father can say that you know it must be very very serious and the mother brought the child and told me all the problem and i called the boy i said uh, what's your name he told me i looked straight into the face now when you are dealing with demons you don't burn your head like this saying uh, jesus will deliver you then you, you quickly look at his face and put your face down. Jesus will do. You look straight at his face. The eyes are the windows into the soul. That makes you to see what is inside. You won't understand that if you don't have experience. 
Look straight into the face. I said, boy, I'm going to cast out those devils. He said, yes, sir. And then I said, you devil, get out. That was all. The mother was disappointed. Thinking that, ah, ah, God did not have time. I have time. <laughs> but the time is not to be spent on the devil. I saw the mother later. I said, how is the boy? He said, it's another boy now. <laughs> Everything totally changed. But it takes preparation. But, you know, if you won't even get prepared, here we are at Walker's Retreat. Walker's Retreat. And we just pray, pray, pray here. And we cry our crocodile tears. And after crying now, we get there. You can't meditate on the word of God while you are there. Don't you see me, even if I don't tell you, while I am going around, don't you see my earphone on me? Go anywhere that I'm going. Because I don't have any other time for my training. I must listen to Bible cases, I must listen to a lot of things, get myself ready. And even while I am in this workers retreat here, I'm still following my timetable for personal development. And here you are, and I am the person that should be resting, saying that uh, ah, by the grace of God, with all these testimonies uh, that are happening, that uh, this one that uh, God has done, but no, I don't do like that. because. I want to stay fresh all the time. I was having a workers uh, retreat here last week and a wife of a professor went to a uh, fellowship center looking for me. He, she couldn't find me. She came to this place and said, uh, my husband uh, is having problems. Describe the problems. I said, you see, we're having workers retreat here now. I said, but uh, you can bring him to church tomorrow. He said, Pastor Kumui, I don't know whether my husband will live till tomorrow. <laughs> that it is so serious. That even if the professor dies now, nobody will be surprised. Because everybody knows about the problem. And that it was so urgent. That's why I went to Bagada. They said you are here. That's why I came here. I was having workers retreat. Now, this is not something I can say, oh, I am sorry. It is not on my fasting day. It is not on my day of power. That man will just die. So I said, what shall we do now? Here I am in workers retreat. I cannot leave this place now. And it is so delicate that the man cannot even be brought. Because, uh, you know, the gallops and everything, they don't want the man just to die like that. And he says, what shall we do now? And uh, then she brought uh, handkerchief out and said, I believe that if you pray on this one, at least this one will preserve his life till tomorrow and it will, I will now bring him to Bagada tomorrow. Otherwise, it, I, don't, I don't believe that he can stay till tomorrow. And uh, right there, I prayed. <laughs> the way God works with me, when I pray, when God answers, I know he answers. I will tell you the answer. Before you even go, I will tell you that this is the answer. Of the person I prayed for, and while I prayed and finished praying, and I said, You're all right now. The person smiled. I said, When I mentioned this at this particular time, five minutes ago, this is what happened. The person said, Yes. That's prayer. Not the, uh, you know, hide and seek prayer. That faith representative will know that I'm praying. Then when, when the faith has gone, uh, you are doing like this. But when you turn around and uh, say, uh, the prayer warriors, are you there? Oh yes, Lord, oh yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> not that one, no. That one will not work. You are following me. Last, last Saturday, I just prayed. And the woman got home. And he robbed the... He didn't, she didn't just touch the husband like this. Just robbed the whole body. <laughs> you know, they came to church on Sunday. <laughs> And that man was looking still weak because he has not been able to eat, but he, he was so grateful to God that since yesterday, after that thing touched him, the power of God. That's what we are talking about. But you know, just to be lazy, not to do anything, not to develop yourself. 
and uh, it will be talking, talking, talking about about economy, about Nigeria, about business, about this, about that. What's your concern in that? Are you a politician? Are you not a preacher? Don't you know that when the politicians, when they run and they meet the world, they are running back to us. They are coming back to meet us. This place where we are. You understand what I'm saying? Why run, why run with them? When you run along with them and you hit the wall and then they run back and they don't meet anybody here. Let's stay where we are. In faith and in power. And when they don't have solution. I have solution. I won't tell you I won't tell you lie. Because I have the wisdom of God. When I open my mouth, I believe that the store of wisdom and knowledge will come up. They need it and they are coming. But before they come, I'm getting prepared. But you know, if uh, while they are running, you are running after them. The things I didn't want to tell, I started telling you. Rise up and let us pray. Enough for you. Your Father, we do not want our life to be like King Saul. We have the armor, but the heart fainted. We have the stature of a giant whose shoulder is above all. But Lord, we do not want our own life to be wasted away. We have spent many years. You have spoken to us in secret. We have had a day. And you have made it plain that which you have spoken in secret. Father, we are asking, even this evening, we are asking that this that we have had again, which has been made bare and plain before us, Father, that will be profited in it in Jesus' name. We know the way of the sluggard. We know the farmland of the lazy man. We know the end of the lazy student. Father, you've spoken to us from that which we know of. You spoke not in proverb. But as you speak unto Moses, mouth to mouth, so you have spoken this evening. We are asking, we are asking, no, that that which we have had again, do not condemn us in the last day. Father, we have decided. By your grace, we have decided to rise up and be obedient unto your word. Grant us the grace to be obedient in Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for his testimony. Thank you because he is in our midst. We are asking, as we are living here, O oh Lord God, even this auditorium, we are asking that our hearts will be open to listen and to hearken to the voice of the Spirit in Jesus' name. The Kotokatis are never achievers. Talkative leak away. They cannot gather. Father, we are asking that in the name of Jesus Christ, that every one of us will put a watch over our mouth in Jesus' name. 
Father, that we will not be men that throw away tears unto the swine, that we will not be men that soar to the wild wind. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the armor. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the grace and enablement. We bless you, Lord. We are more than the conqueror. As we are obedient unto your word, as we rise up from laziness and to diligence, we are more than the conqueror. As we are listening and we are obedient unto your word, we are more than the conqueror. We shall obey, O Lord. We follow you to the end. We know you have given us the land. We know you have brought us to the promised land. We know that you have set our feet upon the land. We know you have given it unto us as possession. Father, it is not your desire that laziness should destroy us. Therefore, thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for your word. We bless you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christ to receive. Seems now some soul to say, Go, Spirit, go thy way, some more convenient day on their, on their call. Almost persuaded, come, come today. Almost persuaded, turn not away. Jesus invites you here. Angels are lingering there. Prayers rise from heart to dear, O oh, wanderer, come. Almost persuaded, harvest his part. Almost persuaded, gloom comes at last, almost cannot avail. Almost is but to fail, sad, sad, that beat away, almost, but lost.
going the downward road to this side, will their final ending be lost through a long eternity? Repent and believe this very hour. Trust in the Savior's grace and power. Then shall your joyous answer be, I'm saved through a long eternity. Eternity, eternity. Where will you spend eternity?
holiness unto the Lord is our watchword and song. Holiness unto the Lord as we are marching along. Sing it, shout it loud and long. Holiness unto the Lord now and forever. Thank you. 